Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Happy Reformation Day! Yay. Woo! We're not doing the wave, but we feel like it. I know inside, deep down inside. We welcome you to Zion Lutheran Church here in Petoskey. Family, friends, welcome in the name of our Lord. It's so good to have everybody with us on this, the, uh, the culmination of the confirmation process, uh, but really just a continuation of who these young people are as, uh, as, as children of God in their life and their walk of faith. So they've been at this for almost three and a half years. This is, this is a big deal. Uh, we, were, we were talking about it with grandparents at home, and, and it's a, uh, oh, because one of them's my kid over there. Um, the, uh, <laughs> so, there, so I might cry. Uh, but uh, they, they did two years of Bible stories. They did another year of catechism stuff. And then as we got them into high school, all as ninth graders now, uh, as I just told them in there, getting ready, it's to get you into high school with Jesus, at least as a start. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited for these four, and I thank you as family members for your support and for your getting them to God's house and uh, the, the years to come, because our work is not over yet, right? They're, they're going to be standing on their own two spiritual feet uh, and yet, uh, we're not walking away from them as family or as a church. And so we're here to celebrate their confirming of their faith, uh, their baptismal vows, uh, becoming their own, and all of this today. Uh, I wanted to make a couple of, of uh, th point, point out a few things in the bulletin. You'll see in the bulletin cover, the inside cover of the bulletin, maybe you've already uh, taken a look at them. Their uh, banner and poster projects, I've printed them up. We're going to be referencing those throughout our sermon message today. They're also in real life over there on that wall, over by the windows. And uh, you can feel free. They've got some questions and answers and some explanation of what's on their poster and their banner um, over there. And those will be up for our church members to look at for the next couple of weeks and, and then our students will be taking them home and probably putting them in the, the best spot on their wall so they'll always look at it. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Just It might wind up in the closet. Who knows? Um, but I, I, I'm really proud of what they did there, and we'll be talking about those projects uh, today as well. Uh, the other thing I wanted to make mention of is part of our practice with uh, confirmation is that as of today, these four are, are eligible and welcome at the Lord's table for communion. And so our, our service today will include Holy Communion. I just wanted to make a mention that uh, our policy is printed here. Members of Zion and members of other LCMS congregations are encouraged to join us at the communion rail to receive the Lord's Supper. Now, we are doing it a little differently. Due to precautions related to COVID-19, we'll not be kneeling at the rail. Instead, what we're going to do, uh, the family of one confirmand at a time will come forward, and you'll all remain standing at the rail to receive the body and blood of our Lord. Now, children and family members who are not communing are welcome to come forward to receive a blessing, and you indicate this uh, by either bowing your head a little bit or kind of putting your hands behind or to the side rather than uh, receiving the Lord's body and blood. Uh, so what we'll do during that communion time is the confirmand will be here dead center, maybe mom and dad on either side, and then everybody else who's going to be communing from your, your family groups can just sort of line up one way and the other, and then uh, we'll come down the line and, and uh, serve communion, at the end of which uh, we'll just do a simple dismissal bow, and then you'll go back by way of the outside of the pews and drop the little cups into the silver bowls uh, as you go. Um, and so, since we're so excited, and we haven't been doing this a lot here at Zion with our, our services yet, but with this special service, we do have um, full hymns. We're encouraging folks to keep their masks on for these. Um, when we get to the pictures later on, we can do photographs without masks. We, we talked about that, and I think that's reasonable. Uh, but uh, that's kind of the general plan for us today. Let's begin by calling on the Lord's name. Uh, please rise. We begin in God's name, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We open our hymnals now. So the hymnals are the burgundy ones in front of you, the burgundy books. 
And our hymn number is 590. As baptism is a big part of what we're confirming in their faith this day, uh, we're going to sing Baptized into Your Name Most Holy, number 590. our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. For our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive me of my sins. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. And upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of our God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we turn the page, you'll see Psalm 46. This is the one assigned for Reformation Sunday, and it works so well as we consider our lives of faith as we move forward from this time of training for our young people into the quote-unquote real world. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way. Though its waters roar and foam. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God will help her when he comes. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. 
He utters his voice through her mouths. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord. How he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit, we pray, upon your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and in your truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant your church your saving peace. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So during this time of uh, COVID, church, and things being so different in the world, we've taken this uh, pattern of kind of sermonizing around the readings. And so there's not going to be a get in the pulpit sermon, hold your disappointment for later. Um, but that doesn't mean it's going to be much shorter, as my wife reminds me often. Um, the, uh, the readings on the next page are the confirmation verses that our students have selected. But I want to start, actually, on the cover of the bulletin with those couple of verses from Romans chapter 3. And we're going to walk through these readings, these, these wonderful scripture passages that have been chosen for, for their confirmation verses, with the addition of this one to start. So, briefly, from Romans chapter 3, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. As we hear this brief selection from our epistle reading for this Reformation Sunday, it really starts us off effectively. This simple idea that all have sinned, everybody, even and especially the ones wearing white today. <laughs> also me, yes, that's true. <laughs> we know that as good as we try to be, as good as we look on the outside, as shiny and beautiful and, and well put together as we make the effort to be in life, we're here in God's house for really one reason. We're here because we're sinners and we need God's help. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If that was the end of a sentence, if that was the end of the story, it'd be over. There'd be no reason we just, okay, whatever. But it's not the end. And as Paul speaks to the church in and surrounding Rome, his goal is to share with the different groups that he's talking to, the different types of people that are hearing this message, that you all, all of us, are in the same boat of needing help. And all of us, every one of us, whether we think highly or whether we know we don't deserve it, we all receive the same grace as a gift. Now, I joked in the earlier services today when we were talking about this more at length that, you know, if you received a gift, you, you, you get it and it's handed off, and, and the giver of the gift lets go of the gift, and at that point, it's yours. It's the receiver. It's, it's my gift now. I've been given this gift. Now, if the giver of the gift were to say, and this gift can be yours for 12 easy payments of $9.95 plus shipping and handling, is it really a gift? No, there's no strings attached. It can't be. And this is how our God works. His grace, his very son, 
is given to us as a gift. Now these guys have gone through some good training, so they've learned some great Bible stories, they, they know a thing or two about the, the Lutheran faith and the catechism that we taught them, and yet, I hope that if I were to spring one question, I told them they wouldn't have to talk during the service, but I may have fibbed. <laughs> Not much. You guys know this answer, even before I ask the question. What is the one thing that you need to know, the one name that gives us this grace? Please, one of you, at least say it. It's the word of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord, and I'm fishing for that Sunday school answer. <laughs> Cora? Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> She's closest to the microphone on the recording camera, so that was good. <laughs> Whether we know the scriptures inside and out, which I pray you do, and whether we've got them memorized or we fail some days, the name of Jesus, the hope and the gift of Jesus is where we find our base and find our salvation. Let's go to Korah's verse, Romans 12, verse 2. Again, from the letter to the Romans, uh, Paul has gone on for all these chapters since we just heard from Romans and he says to this, this, these people, these Christians, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. But wait, didn't we just say you don't have to be good or acceptable or perfect in God's sight? Why'd you pick this verse, Cora? I think your grandpa might help you, so I better be careful. He's sitting behind you with a collar on. So here's the thing. We are blessed with salvation. We are blessed with forgiveness, and it is an eternal thing. So what do we do with it? What comes after the day of our baptism? What comes after the moment where we realize what Jesus has done for us, after the absolution has been spoken and all your sins are forgiven? Well, we don't go back out into the world and look like the world. There's something different about us. <coughs> not because we've earned it, again, not because we're really good at it, but Korah's verse is talking about seeing what God has done and letting it, letting God's word work in our hearts and in our lives so that we can, well, quite frankly, show other people God better. And what is it we want people to see? Well, we move down to Peter's verse, John 3.16. I love John 3.16. A lot of people love John 3.16. It's a wonderful verse, but it makes it even better when you know who he's talking to in John chapter 3. He's talking to one of the enemies a Pharisee named Nicodemus who came under the cover of darkness because he wasn't sure he wanted to be Jesus' enemy or not. He wanted some honest answers. And Nicodemus is the one who gets this, this gospel in a nutshell, famous verse spoken to him directly. This guy who could have been shouting for Jesus' death, could have been plotting for his arrest, but instead he comes humbly with nobody else watching and he hears that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Whoever believes. So we're conforming ourselves not to the world, but to God's will and God's plan so that others may believe, so that others may know the good news that Christ has come for us. That he gave his son you. James, James's verse, which is another one that's very strong, very strong, James. If you, we, we had a little laugh when James printed off his, his uh, poster. You'll see James Lives Matter. Boom. It's, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was purely by accident because he was, he was honestly just trying to think of what's an image of strength? What's an image of, of kind of like I don't have anything to worry about, and he's got a cross in there too, so we let it go. And, and I think if you think of it appropriately, this idea that in Joshua 1 verse 9, Joshua has this heap of responsibility just thrown onto his shoulders. 
He's walked through the desert with Moses for 40 years. And Joshua is now, after Moses has just died and gone to heaven, Joshua is given the job by God himself. And these words are coming from God himself to Joshua. Hey, you know, you got this. You can lead all these people. You can conquer a promised land. You can do this with my help. And you guys, maybe today seems easy and you've got your family around you and, and life's not too bad. I know it's not great these days, but it's not too bad. But there may be times when we need to come back to this with the weight of the world on our shoulders. The grief of a leader and a friend, Moses in Joshua's case, who is recently gone. And yet God's word saying, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, whoever believes the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is this combining these verses. You guys did it on accident, maybe. I think God had something in store for us here. And then there's Ben. Psalm 23, verse 1. I'm going to razz my kid just a little bit here. When the pastor's kid goes and picks Psalm 23, verse 1 for a confirmation verse, the pastor goes, oh, What? There's so many others that you could have picked. <laughs> I got over it, though. Because as we talked about it, it means a lot to him and... It means a lot to me, too, and I'd like to share a few things about that. One of the things that, as Ben and I talked about Psalm 23, verse 1, and you guys know Psalm 23, um, you know the valley of the shadow of death, and the table being prepared, and the presence of the enemies, but right here at the beginning, you see how it's small capital letters, Lord? This is a big deal. This is a big deal for all of us. As we think about God being our shepherd, it's not just the guy who's in charge, he's my shepherd too. When you see L-O-R-D in, in all caps in the Bible, this means that God used, or one of the writers used, God's name, I am, Yahweh. And this is significant because he didn't give that name just willy-nilly. He gave this name, this great I am, with a purpose. A purpose of his own authority. And I'll say, the name sounds kind of vague. You know, I am that which I am. Okay, what are you? He just is. Our God is. You got something that might qualify, and he's better than it. He's bigger than it. He is taking care of it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, something that's sort of interesting that I haven't told Ben about this, or maybe he's realized it, that uh, my favorite Bible verse, it wasn't my confirmation verse, but my favorite Bible verse, do you remember the story, Ben? You weren't thinking of this. It comes immediately before this one in the Bible. <laughs> it comes immediately before this one in the Bible. And Psalm 22 is that prophetic psalm, oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Talking about Jesus on the cross. And Jesus quotes it from the cross, and my kid's looking it up right now in front of the Bible. Okay. <laughs> oh, brother, Dad, you're making this about you again. <laughs> All right. But these verses, these verses 31, or 30 and 31 from Psalm 22, after Jesus has taken on the cross, after he has taken our sin in that prophetic form, right before he declares himself to be our shepherd once again, it says, posterity will serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. This is where I'm going to cry. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. So, my verse that I love talks about the next generation, all you guys, knowing and having that faith 
And that faith is exactly what Ben has chosen, what you guys have all elected to choose as your verses, that God is the one in charge, that God is the one watching over you. And today, it's not the conclusion. It's just the start. It's just the beginning of what God is doing for you and through you because you have been saved, because as we go through your confirmation vows in a little bit, they will echo your baptismal vows that your parents made on your behalf, that some of your sponsors who might be here made on your behalf, that the church has held you in. And now God is with you as you walk forward, taking that same faith on your own shoulders, except it's not on your shoulders. It's our God who has done it on your behalf for you. Our hymn of the day comes next. Uh, it's number 571. So we join in God loved the world so that he gave. Number 571. So if you would reach for your hymnals once more and turn to pages 272 through 274 in the front part of the hymnal, the congregation will be seated, but I ask the confirmands to please come forward to your spots that we talked about. Just stand up here. And I failed to introduce to you before, Mr. Brian Horning is here, our Director of Family and Youth Ministries. He has, he has taken a, uh, a huge role in the lives of these young folks. Uh, we've been alternating who teaches them on Wednesdays over the last couple of years. They've had to put up with him just as much as me. Um, and uh, I want to say thank you for being here. He is going to uh, reiterate and read their vows or their verses again. Um, when we come time to give them their confirmation certificate, as well as uh, Mr. John Jude has for, for years, almost for generations now, uh, he has made these little crosses with a little brass plaque for each of you. 
Uh, this one I grab is Ben's. Uh, Benjamin Peters confirmed October 25th, 2020, Zion Lutheran Church. And uh, that is another thing you can hang on your wall uh, as we remember today. All right, do you guys all have the right page? Are you ready? I don't have the right page yet. All right, do you all have the right page? And you're ready. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, he said to his apostles, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Dear friends, you have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. So, dear confirmants, do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, yes I do. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. And dear brothers and sisters, congregation members, please answer with, uh, with them as we go through the Apostles' Creed. So rise for these next three questions, if you would, please. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes. yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation will please be seated again. Back to you, Floyd. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church as drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith and word and deed remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and that you have received the teachings of the Lord. You have confessed the faith, you have been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, may he who has begun this good work in you bring it to completion at the day of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so, in order that we arranged, Cora, come on over. So Cora, Eileen Erickson, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, who has forgiven you of all of your sins strengthen you with his grace even to life everlasting. Amen. Cora, hear a reading from Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Peter John Hasse. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hand of blessing over you for the middle part. Peter, 
the Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, who has forgiven you of all of your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Peter, here from John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. James? James David Mobley, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, who has forgiven you of all of your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. James, a reading from Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Congratulations. Ben. Benjamin Alexander Peters. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has given you this new birth of water and the Spirit, who has forgiven you of all of your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. And then a reading from Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you, Brian. And now we must, must do the liturgical hand sanitizer. I know. I know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> God's blessings to you guys. Let's, uh, let's pray. Congregation will please rise as we pray. <clears throat> Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and we praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the, to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with each of you now and always. In our Lord's name, go in his peace. Amen. So go on and head back to the family that brought you here. <laughs> and we're going to remain standing and we're going to join in our prayers of the church for today. We pray. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for the gift of salvation. On this Reformation Sunday, we talked about this grace being a free gift, something that we never could have earned, never could have imagined on our own. You sent the gift of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. In his life, his death, and his resurrection, it has been made obvious to us through your Holy Spirit's gift of faith that he has done this on our behalf. Our sins have been forgiven our eternity is paid for. We belong to you. As we rejoice with your greater church around the world, we rejoice with these families and these four individuals who just confessed their faith again before you. We pray your blessing upon each of them. Be with their families. Be with their lives of faith until we see you face to face. Keep us, Heavenly Father, we pray. Remember us in your kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. If you would now turn in your hymnals to page 197, we approach the altar of our God, and he has for us 
in with and under this bread and wine, the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, and said to them, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you, now and always. Amen. Amen. Now, during the Agnus Day, Brian and I are going to go wash our hands. I'll put my mask back on. And after the Agnus Day, we'll uh, come forward and we'll, uh, we'll have you guys come as a family in the same order that the kids were confirmed in, if we can handle it well. It'll be easier if we just do Cora, James, Ben, Peter. Uh, 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 I'm making this up as I go along. Can you tell? <laughs> Let's rejoice in what God has done, though. And we join in singing the On You Stay. our Lord. This is the broken and given for you. Take and eat. This is the true bread of heaven. The body of Christ our Lord. This is the blood of Christ for you. Shed for you. That blessing and love belongs to each of you. Christ shed for you. And all. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Please rise once more. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, having received this body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus, may it strengthen you and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting. Amen. 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 We pray. <clears throat> We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love towards one another. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so, we come to the end of the confirmation class journey, but as I've mentioned to these, our young people, I'm really excited to see what comes next in their life of faith, in their service of the church, in the way that they grow throughout their years in high school and beyond. And so we go forth, even though we're all just kind of staying here to take pictures, uh, we go forth with God's blessing. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord remain with you, grant to you all things, and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is listed on this Reformation Sunday as a mighty fortress. Uh, my apologies to 657 people, um, because we're singing 656. We'll remain standing as we join in singing.